It's cutting your head. It's cutting your head a little bit. Okay, we'll adjust it, sir. I got it. I got it. I got it. Okay. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Bishop Greg, G-R-E-G-G, -G, middle initial L, last name G-R-E-E-R. -E -E President of Freedom First International. Also representative of the Samaj Crosby Coalition for Justice, which we have representatives here tonight. We're here simply because we have two people who have been persons of per people of interest in the Samaj Crosby homicide investigation. They want to bring their story forward. We say persons of interest, but we also know them as suspects. They are here tonight. We are here tonight because we want the air cleared once and for all. We want to make sure that the tail end of this particular media briefing, that these young ladies who said that they are 100% innocent, and we stand by them in their testimony, their information is heard. The way that we are going to do this is we're at, we're asking that you reserve your Q and A, and we'll allow each one ten minutes to tell specifically their version of what happened. Ten minutes, and then we can start a Q and A until we uh, decide to end. And at the very end, the very last question that we want to ask, and, and I hate to do it, but we have to. I want to be very specific is the very last question, what do you believe happened to Samaje? Please reserve that to the very end. If, if, it, if no one has a problem with that, then we can proceed. When you folks come up, just say your first name and last name and spell it for the press, and then we'll take it from there, okay? All right, you okay? All right. Come here and get your purse. So when she told her to come in there and get her purse, she went in the house. 
So me, Miss Darlene, and Miss Darlene's other daughter, and all of us are still sitting outside. Just sitting outside listening to the music still. So in the front of the house, they have like a one bed, like a window sitting in front of the house. Like the screen is missing on the window. So I stuck my head in the window. And I'm like, what y'all in here doing? Sure, you got a charger. She was sitting on the end of the couch. I guess Lucretia was in the bathroom doing something, whatever she was doing. So that's what she said. Yeah, I got one plugged up right here. It's like a stitching cord they had going through the living room. I walked in the house. I put my phone on the stitching cord. And I stood up in there. So Lucretia came out and said, could you flat iron my hair? I said, I don't care. I she asked me to flat iron her hair. She said, well, let's just go to your house and do it. And I said, well, we can go to my house. You know, because she said something about the road. So I said, we can just go to my house and we can go do it in my house. So she told me to grab the charger, because it was hers, and the flat iron. I grabbed the flat iron and I grabbed the charger. I walked outside. Ms. Darlene was still sitting in the car. Her and her other daughter. And I said, can you give me a ride around the corner? Because there's not enough room in the little green car. So when I asked her to give me a ride around the corner, you know, there wasn't enough room in the green car, Ms. Darlene said, yeah. So that's when I, like I told them, I don't know when the ice cream came to play. Nobody told me anything about ice cream. We were supposed to go to my house and flat iron Lucretia's hair. So, well, after we got done in the car, where the first, no, first the keys was, we couldn't find the keys. Because uh, Jamarion and the girl, the Tiana, walked next door to Dorian's house. So when they walked over next door to Dorian's house and they couldn't find the keys, that's when uh, Dorian pulled up and she asked uh, where was Tiana at. That's when Miss Darlene called Taya, I mean, uh, Jamari Yon's phone. And when she called Jamari Yon's phone, Jamari Yon came outside in uh, T Mac. And T Mac got in the car with his mama. And Lucretia asked Jamari Yon, like, hey, where the keys at? And then, did you see him? He said, yeah, he was in his pocket. And they start play fighting. Like, who you have the keys all the time? So, after they start play fighting and say about the keys, they finally get in the car, the car wouldn't start. So, after the car wouldn't start, you know, they uh, called the dude around the corner, Doug, to come over there and jump the car off. So when Doug finally came over there and jumped the car off, we get ready to leave. Sharif got out the car to the passenger side, yelled at Miss Darlene and curses, my baby in the car with y'all. I bust out laughing. I thought it was a joke. I'm like, girl, I ain't seen your baby since we been here. Miss Darlene said, don't pay that girl no attention, because she crazy. So Cresha and Sharif walked in the house, and when they came back out, she was hitting her head. Cresha was hitting her head like, no, nah, no, nah, for real. This ain't no joke. We can stop laughing. Some objects not in there. After that, that's when the search started. But I've been saying, like I said, from day one, I ain't seen the baby. She was never there when I got there. So, only going by what Miss Darlene and Lucretia told me. They said that Sharif took her baby in the house when the DCFS lady was there to change her pamper because she was fussy and she needed her pamper change. And they said that was the last time we seen her. So, I see the story. I have no clue about that. I don't know about uh, Sharif taking her baby in the house and changing her pamper. I don't know about that. So, like I said, I don't. I'm not, I can't point the finger at Miss Darlene. I can't point the finger at the Christian. I can't point the finger at Sharif. I didn't see nobody do nothing because I haven't never seen the baby. So, I'm just here to just tell my story. So, my name is Tamika Robinson.
chair standing in a door. This is the door. I'm gonna find out it was a DCFS lady. She stood here, Cherie stood here. The DCFS lady didn't go no further. She was there for about 30, 45 minutes. At this point, we didn't know what was going on. Um, she thought that the DCFS lady was coming for her kids, but she wasn't. She was coming for Jakai, which is my other grandson, Cherie's son. But he was all red in the hospital. So about 30, 45 minutes later, the lady leaves. I'm in my car. I'm waiting for him to come home from school. First, first he came home with CJ, which is Cherie's oldest son. He came home. Then my daughter came, the bus from there, and then Jamarion and Tiana, they came to the house. Um, I told Lucretia that we were going to Dairy Queen. And then that's something that I always did. Not just that day, I always took the kids to Dairy Queen. When Tamika and them came over, I said, I'm not taking four more people to Dairy Queen. And, um, but the kids was playing, and everybody was playing, everybody was getting along, it was hot. I was playing music from my phone, and I said, you know what, Tamika don't know this, but I'm just going to take her and her kids as well. When it was time for us to get ready to go, I was still sitting in my car, so whatever happened with the, the hair, uh, doing the hair and stuff like that, I didn't know until after they came back out. When they came back out, Tamika said that we're going over her house. And I told Chris, I said, well, we'll go on the west side later. But she didn't know that I was going to take everybody because that's something I did the night before. I just had went and bought a whole bunch of stuff to be fixed at Tamika's house because that's something that we did. So when, um, as she stated, all that was true. Um, about the keys and the car went start and all those things. So at this point, I'm still in my car. I never get out of my car until I came back after Cherie came out and said her baby wasn't there. Everybody started looking. Her son and my son took off on foot. I took off in my car. Richard took off in her car. Everybody just started looking. Um, when I came back, that's the first time I got out of my car. So I go in the house, it was starting to get dark. Um, I'm looking for a tree. Um, she's in the backyard, her and CJ coming from the house next door to your left, not the house to the right. She's fussing at him, saying, saying stuff, and he's like, well, I don't know, and I don't know. That's all he was saying, CJ was saying. So, Carisha thinking that me and Sharif and I'm going to argue with Sharif, what I was saying was, I need an extra set of eyes in my car because it was getting dark and I'm driving. So, after that point, I asked Tamika, I said, you know what, Sharif's not coming, can she come with me? Tamika said, yeah. So, at this point, when they, well, whoever was calling the police, I don't know, because I was out looking for the baby. Um, when the police got there, <coughs> Sheree took off for over two and a half hours. So the police and uh, different teams was approaching me. And at this point, it was like vultures. Everybody was just coming at me. I'm the grandmother, but Sheree couldn't be found. So I asked, uh, they wanted a picture so they can do an Amber Alert. And I didn't know how to do it and send it to his email. So I asked Tamika to do it for me. Um, after Tamika did all that, everybody started coming. About two hours later, I spot Sharif. I told the police, that's Sharif right there. I took, tried to take her by her arm and bring her over, and that's when me and Ashley get into it. And I start saying, it's not about nothing but finding out where Tink is at. And Tink is Samaje, that's what I call her. So at this point, it started getting later and later and later and it was still a bunch of people having went home we had kids that was there to meet the kids there people were hungry them children was hungry so i said i gave to and a friend of mine a bunch of money to go get eight or nine pizza um it, and as i was saying it was getting dark 
and people needed flashlights. So I sent a friend of mine, gave her some more money to go get a bunch of flashlights. First for Darlene and then for both of you. Darlene, you said I think something might have happened to what? What was the name you had for Samaj? Ting. Teeny? Ting. T I N. Ting. I think it's Okay. And then um, how much time from the time um, you started telling your story to when you said we can't, that you believe Cherie said she can't find her daughter, how much time was that, roughly, that story that you just told like in real time? Um, Ish. I know it was a while ago. Well, when when we was when I was we was in the car, when they couldn't start the car, we was still me and her was still in my car, and the, the kids was in my car, but they was jumping all over my seat. So I told them they need to get out the car and just go play. By the time they got the sec, the car jumped off, and it was time to go do hair uh, for her to do Chris's hair from that moment on. When they went in well, the house. Um, but was it minutes or hours or minutes? It was right after that. Okay. Right after that. The only person that was in the house was Sharif. So the and from that from the from the straightening rod and the charger to the time that yeah. somebody yeah. said I yeah, can't because, until Sharif said I can't find my daughter, that was roughly minutes. Right. Well, after she couldn't after the, the straightening in the curling irons or whatever the car wouldn't start so they had it was a guy around the corner they had to walk it over it wasn't that you take another car two cars and jump it off he had a battery pack that he sat on the car so it takes about 20 30 minutes for even the car to even start we appreciate that level of detail that you're getting us we're just trying to figure out if from the time you got there to when from the time that i got there i got there it has to be like about four, four 
person. We're not naming it right before. So about so she called the police about six of them. So it hasn't been about an hour. Okay. Hasn't been about between yeah. anything from an hour to an hour and a half. When she when she first said that our baby was here. It was about an hour and a half later. Almost two hours. For her to call the police. I don't know. Because because I, was, was I was looking. I was out looking. So if my if if, if my baby was missing, I would have called right then. Everybody just started. She never left the house to go search for the baby. We all did. She stayed at home. So in your mind, you assume that she called the police. Did no one have a clue that she didn't? You know, we were looking for the baby. We all was not there. We left to go search for team. Cherise still was there. So how long did you each spend at the house before Say, I haven't seen How long were you there before anyone knew Jonas? Um, I was there for like two hours altogether. From the time that she, when I first walked around the corner to the time that they said that the baby was born, my baby was I was there altogether. It had to be like about no longer than two hours. And because did you when I was there, I was there the time? Why not? The reason I did because I don't know they left that way. And so when I got there, I don't know her, so she could have been in the house to me. But you don't know the baby. So I don't just know. people wondering if your relation to the baby is what? No. I don't just, know. Just don't a family. Know. Right. Right. Yeah. Yeah. She was she was she comes up. She it was that's my friend. Okay. You know, um and you know, she met Cherie in the Springfield where they all live in Springfield. And Lucretia is your daughter. Lucretia is my daughter. Okay. So, so did either of you see Samaje at all? I didn't. Yeah, yeah. The, the DCFS worker, she seen Ting. We all did. I gave Ting and all the kids. I, I was in the car cleaning my purse. I was just in the car, just listening to music and time. And um, I gave all the kids um, airheads. But Samaje, I gave her an orange airhead. And I gave her a, a, a Avenger. Can we say, can we just say Samaj, just for clarity purposes, okay. so we don't get like this? It's kind of hard, because I'm so is. used I know to Tink. Is. Tink is Samaj, that's what I call her, is Tink. Wait, but you, so you said you, said you didn't see her, but now you're saying that you did. So no, who did it? Who I, did I was there, I was there, they was all outside, even Samaj was outside dancing. What when time? Tinka, when yeah. it, it, it was about, about three-ish, um, a little after three. Because um, the kids started getting out of school and making it home like about three thirty. So three o'clock. You, um, you see, CJ so comes home first, and then Chantania, and then Jamari. So three o'clock. You see, Shay. About, about when the DCFS day. When I pulled in, when I came, I was the first one there. Back then, the lady came. Didn't know who she was, and then a little bit after that, Christian now came. From that point on, Tink was at home. Um, the DCFS woman was there for Jakari, who is Tink's well, Jakai. brother. Jakai, I beg your pardon. Yeah. So did the DCFS person, that woman, did she, as far as you know, ever see Samaje? Yeah. It okay. was all outside. They started throwing shoes in between them. The DCFS lady, this is the door. The DCFS lady stood on this side of the door inside the house, and Cherie stood right here. They started throwing shoes. Donovan. Jabari, Krisha Little Boy, and Harmony and um, Team Samaje started throwing shoes between the two. You know, but the DCFS lady, she never left her spot. Cherie never left her spot. The, the only time the DCFS lady left was when she left and got in her car and left. But you said Cherie went missing for a couple hours. Right. When the police came, when after the police came, Sheree left for over two hours. After they got there. So at three o'clock, you saw Samaje. Yeah, she was then there. what's the next time frame? Between how many hours went by and you didn't see her? When did you notice um, you didn't see her? I don't know. Uh, but probably about quarter to four. Maybe. Quarter to four, you realized you did not. It wasn't but about realizing it. All the kids still was outside. Tink needed her diaper change. She was sleepy. She ate a whole bunch of uh, candy and juice 
and her shirt had a whole bunch of juice on it. So I wasn't paying no attention. I'm in my car. We, my my granddaughter Harmony, is shy, and she started doing moves that we ain't seen before. So we was like edging her on, you know, like go Harmony, you know, edging her on. So she had danced. We was focusing on the kids having a good time. We playing music. My mind ain't thinking that I gotta watch this baby because she's not gonna come back. You know, our focus on letting the kids have a good time. Cherie was out there dancing too. So at three o'clock, you're you see Sebastian. You arrive at yes. three forty-five. What happened? You said about about three forty-five. Um, I don't know what happened. You know, like after that because. Everybody still was dancing. When Tamika came up, everybody was dancing. She was dancing. I didn't get out the car, so I wasn't dancing, but I was bobbing to it. Everybody was dancing. When Cherie went in the house to take the baby to go get her, her diaper changed, did nobody expect for the baby not to come back out? What time was that? When, I don't know the exact time. It was uh, going on four. So at 3.45, you say Cherie took Samanji inside. I'm not going to say it at 345. Oh, yeah, yeah. She, she went in the house. The, the baby had juice on her. I gave all the kids juice. CJ went in the house and got the juice. Um, there was juice boxes, six in a pack. I gave all the children juice boxes, and I gave them their head candy. Um, so my J, waist, hers was all over her shirt, and she just had on some, some little pants, but her diaper was so full, you can, it was full. So you can see the bowl. She needed her pencil check. So she goes into the house. Cherie with, yeah. allegedly changes diaper, whatnot, and right. then what happens? I'm, I'm, I don't know because I'm in my car. We in the car listening to music. We are not paying attention. Like I can't see through a building. I can't look through a house. So when does Cherie come back out and say my baby? When when it was time for us to get ready to go because Carisha had asked Cherie is she still going to go, and Cherie said no. So you know, next week. Yeah. She said no. But what time is that? When, when she suddenly says, I don't know where Samantha is. Yeah, when did you learn that? Right when, right when, after the car got jumped off. I mean, you say six o'clock? Is that least, no. Hours later? What happened? How long? Yeah, because yeah, we still have to go a while. A long, a while. So three o'clock, she goes to get a diaper change. And, and to and change her clothes so because about, she was wet. So about what time? So that was 345. Was it an hour later that you heard that she was how did you hear it when? It was a it was about uh probably so probably an hour because at the, the this is what I'm trying to say. When Cherie took Tink into the house, I'm in my car. I'm playing with the rest of the kids. I'm not paying that no mind. I'm not even focused on that. You're not worried about your granddaughter. I'm not. Why would I worry, worry about, about her when she's in the care of her mother? Okay, just wondering. You know, I'm worried about <coughs> all the kids, but all the kids was playing. You you saying it like, oh, well, I knew something was going to happen to her, so I'm not worried about her. No, that's not the case. The case was she went in the house with her mom like any other child going in the house with their mother. Don't nobody expect for the child not to come back out. So, so as far as you, you're concerned... And I, I don't want to put words in your mouth, but am I understanding correctly? You believe that Cherie might be the last person who saw her daughter alive? Indeed. Yes. Indeed. I was in my car. So you said that you began looking for looking for I took off in my car. When? Right when she said that the baby was missing. It was about 4.45, you're saying? I don't know the exact time. It was starting to get dark. I don't know. I made it over there about 4.30. I made it over there about 4.30. It took, my son got off the bus at almost 3.30. Me and my kids got dressed. It's, uh, me and all three of my kids. When we made it around the corner, it was, it was about almost 4.30. I'm going to like, way back like what we got. I told him to be up in the, the period time of bro, four something when I got there. So I've been there for like about 20 minutes. Instead of saying they wanted to come up miles to go down here. It was no longer than an hour and a half. Almost two hours. So therefore, from the time that I got there, from the time they said they see there at three forty-five, I made it there almost four thirty. So it was an hour or something prior time from the time that I got there. It's missing. So six, so five forty-five, six. But they called about six, almost six o'clock. 
take off the police and say, I don't know who she was this one, but I don't know if Cherie called or Preacher called. I don't know who called. So six o'clock is when you're like, something is wrong. Something is wrong. Which is also when they call police. Right, because I was already gone, and then I'm trying to get her to help me. Then she got her kids there. Somebody got to keep out her kids. It was just, it was, it was just a lot of people. What was your DCFS visit? Yeah. Because the kids hadn't came home from school yet. So they were dancing outside. Was, they was, they was, all, they was, was on their way. The kids was on their way home when the DCS lady got there. So that was after like three something. So, so this was a planned visit? Well, I didn't hear you. Oh, was this a planned visit? Was she expecting? I, I don't know. I, I don't know. So what were you doing between three o'clock and six o'clock? Sitting in my car playing music for three hours. Longer than that. That's not, not the only thing. You do that all the time. So the DCFS visit is after the kids are outside playing, and then no, they was they was we all got there around the same time, all of us, me, then the DCFS lady, then Krisha, and Sharita, we all got there around the same right. time. Right, and then you see, but you after that you still saw Samaje outside. Right, the DCFS lady did too. She they was all playing. Okay, and then, and then she left, and then they still Sharita was outside. Takes they still Samaje was outside. outside. No, they still was outside playing. Uh, I wasn't there right. all the time. Yeah. The school, get out of school, none of that. I you wasn't there at 4 I made it there at 4.20 or something. But so, no, 4.30. It, it hasn't been every day by, by 4.30. But I made it around the corner over there. And I wasn't there doing no DCFS, none of that. No, she was not there. She didn't even know that we were going. Only thing she knew was we were going to the west side. I didn't tell her because when she came, in my mind, I had nine people that already by Dairy Queen tour. So when she came, her and her kids, I said, uh-uh, we're going to wait till later when they go home and then I'll buy. But since everybody was getting along, everybody was having fun, everybody dancing, you know, I said, it was hot. I said, you know what? I got 15 extra dollars. I'm going to let her know that I'm going to take her to. It never got to that point because the, uh, Demarion had the keys, the car wouldn't start, <laughs> then take missing. So it never got to the point to where I actually told her. I'm taking them too. She didn't find out about all that until after her. When what Sharif said that the that Samaj is missing, she, when Sharif came out and said my child's missing, she right. said she, well, she, she came out and said is the baby in my car? But she didn't come out of nowhere. You know, she she was sitting in the green car and she stood up and she yelled at the car we was in and said is my baby in the car with us. She wasn't in the she house. She wasn't in the house. No. You know, so at the end of the day. The baby never was in a car with me or her. She was in my car. It was I was in my car. She was in my car. Her three kids, Cherie's son, CJ, and my grandson, Jabbar. Was there an adult in the house? Cherie was the only one in the house. Uh, at the time that she asked about where her baby was, nobody in the house that knew it. So okay, after so she changed the baby's diaper, can I go over this with you, how I think yes, I understand please. it? And it's rough. It's rough estimate. We understand this, and we appreciate it. This over at 1 p.m. Samaj is outside dancing. 3.45, mom takes her inside to go change her diapers, ish. About an hour later, Cherie says from the car, okay, my, where is, where is Samaj? It, it couldn't have been an hour later because they, they said a DCFS left at like three something. She left like three something. I didn't make it over there until 4.30. So We're that's saying, already been an hour already. We're saying about 5.45, 6 is when Cherie said she stole, but she and when she said where her baby was at, it had to be like about at least five something, like about okay. five fifteen, five twenty. Then police are called roughly That's around the six. Was I don't know. Six. I don't know when the police was called. And the only reason I, I know the police was called, I don't know. You were in the car with the baby. I was sitting still, or you were driving there. I left. I drove off. When she said that the baby walked off, or somebody could have came and got the baby, everybody <laughs> started running to look, and not just me. Everybody started. And I wasn't gonna walk and look for her. I've been to the drive. She, did you did anyone go in the house and look for her? She's 17 months. She well, I told can't. you when Cherie when Cherie yelled at the car mm -hmm. and asked was her baby in the car. That's when her and Lucretia walked in the house. She came back out. She was in her hand. No, for real, Mika, it's not funny. Somebody just got in there. So my whole thing is my what puzzled me was this is just me. I mean, like I said. They say the baby walked off, or the mother or whoever said the baby walked off. Why would y'all go in the house and look for it? If she was outside with everybody playing, as they may say, that's a lie. The baby wasn't ever there. 
I'm not going to keep saying it. The baby wasn't there. She wasn't there when I was there, period, at all. I didn't see the baby at all, period, outside, playing with no kids, none of that. Yeah, she was there. She was, the, the baby was messing up the ass there. I said when I was there. So when I was there. Cherie told you that she couldn't find the baby. She didn't ever tell me anything. She's told everyone. She didn't From the car. She asked you if the baby was in the car. Right. So. Well, she didn't ask me. She just yelled over at me and her, like, is my baby From in, the in, car. in my car? So instead of going to look for the house, you just drove off. Yeah, the everybody just, everybody that was there took flight. Why? Why did you leave the house to go look for the Because the mother was there. Like, that's my granddaughter, not my, I'm not. You know what I mean? This is this is the thing. That's my grandchild. I have my own children. Anybody that have children are responsible for their children. Just because I'm granny, I have an eye for all the kids. When her kids come, everybody kids. You don't expect for a child to be with the mother and poof, the baby is gone. You don't expect that. Did anybody see Samaje come out with her mom after she changed her diaper? I don't know what nobody saw. Yeah, I, I, didn't see her. I mean, did she not I don't take know. the baby at all? At you didn't, but Darlene, you saw the, her take the yeah. baby and she yeah. changed the diaper that was full. Yeah, she had to change and the juice all her. over the place. But I'm wondering if anybody saw her come out with the baby. Or if it you was a did. guy I on the bike. He rolled by while we were all out there. He seen Samaje himself. Outside. But you, outside. but you seen her come out of the house. You that was the last time you saw Smudge when the last she was crying. I even paid attention to it because you don't expect that with mom. You know she was with her mom. You know she was. That's who she was with. So I didn't have to to, to think. Oh well, I better go watch this because Smudge may not come out. No, I didn't expect that. It was other children there. We were playing music. I was the DJ, trying to be, and I was. Flipping songs, you know, trying to get the kids what they wanted to hear. Cherie was outside dancing with us without so much. You know, after, you know, when she went in there to, to, um, to change her diapers and stuff, Cherie came back outside and started dancing too. She was dancing the whole time. She was like, when I walked up, she was out there. She was, she was linked up against the car. She wasn't dancing. I'm, she was just my car this way. So that's this is my car. Cherie's standing around. right here. They all, everybody dancing. Everybody was dancing. So, and she didn't look like she was mad or, or sad or nothing. She it, nothing. She didn't look like none of that. Everybody in my, what I thought, everybody was having a good time. That's what my thinking was because it wasn't no problem with nobody arguing, nobody doing nothing. Have you ever gotten the opportunity as, as the grandmother of this child who is no longer with us in such a tragic way, have you ever had the opportunity to ask Cherie straight out where when was the last time you saw your child? What happened Cherie, after the diaper changing? Last time I seen Cherie was Thursday at Samaje's <coughs> birthday camp. I have not seen Cherie. The, the last time before that was at the pool. I have not seen Cherie. I have not spoken to Cherie. Why not? Because for one, I don't know where she at. For two, I have nothing to say to her. I just don't. But don't you want to know what happened? I do want to know what happened, but is Sharif going to say, well, I did this? No, she's not going to say that. She's not going to say that. Is if it, she was going to say anything, she would have been said something by now, and she hasn't said anything. So so what do you think happened, Darlene? How did Samaje end up there? I don't know how she ended up there. Was she, was Sharif? Was there anyone else in the house other than Cherie and Samantha at that moment? My daughter had went in the house, into the room. When she came back out, we was all dancing. She was listening to BTS. That's how it all started with my daughter. Um, BTS came on the radio, and that's her group that she's into. And we don't listen to, to that type of music. But would there have been anyone else in the house with her as she changed to my daughter? Did you go in the house at all? I didn't get out of my car. Three hours. I didn't get out of my car for longer than three hours. Then it was hot. Did you have your air conditioning running? I just wanted to keep out the kids cool in the car. We didn't have to keep it. It was it was hot for ice cream. It wasn't no ninety degrees outside. We had the air conditioning on. We had the windows down. We had the uh, the radio going. I had my aux cord playing music from YouTube. Kids was dancing. Music coming out of my speakers. They was having a good time. That's something that we did all the time. What time did you leave to go? Yeah. We didn't ever did make it to yeah. go get ice cream. We never made it. 
Are you guys in uh, working with police? I've been working with police since April. Have you taken a lie detector test? Yeah. And it was failed, correct? Well, this is, you know, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to say this. Everybody that took one failed it. And the questions were, is the lights on? Is the door closed? Yes. How can you fail if the light's on, if the door closed? How can you move stuff from people's body and say that, I mean, like, it was a hoax. For me, it was a hoax. Would you take another one? Yeah, I would take another one. When's the last time you talked to the police? What was that interaction? Yeah. The last time I talked to the police, the night before. Okay. The night before. So that was months because they told me the last time that I talked to the police, they said that they didn't have to speak to me. And they haven't tried to talk to me. They haven't called my lawyer, anything. I tried to call the detective. I left a message on the stuff that a person was doing and wanted to see stuff. They're not talking to me. Part of one, to no so the part of one for the sheriff's office says that since you got an attorney that you have it. That's not true. I had a, I, I was speaking to them when I had an attorney, when I didn't have one and when I needed one. What would you like to see happen from here? We understand there's another reason for you coming forward tonight. I want to see justice for somebody, and my justice is an arrest and conviction. How so? You want more from Will County, a separate investigation? I would, I would like, if Will, if this, if Will County did all they could do and their backs against the wall, I would ask for outside help no matter where it comes from. I would ask for different eyes, new eyes, someone else's would, intake on it. What do you think that would do? I think that, I don't know. If no one around there knows anything about what happened, how do you I, think I don't know. know. Some, somebody knows something. Right. Well, Somebody knows something. But, but you guys, everyone else, everybody's saying you don't know anything. Well, I'm telling you that I don't know what happened. Mm -hmm. I was in my car. I can't see through a house, through the wood, through a building. I don't know what's up in somebody else's mind or what they may or may not do. Only thing I can do today and what I have been doing is tell the truth. That's it. That's all I can do. As far as anything else, I don't know what Cherie's going to say. I don't know what Tamika's going to say. I don't know what Chris is going to say. I know where I was. I know what I saw. I told what I saw. I told what I did. So why, are you, why did you want to tell me today? Why is that important if you say you said all that? Yeah. Because it's, I was told, you know, basically, I came here today to, to put it back out there so people won't forget. So people will know exactly what I said. Look at everything I said. I said the exact same thing. Nothing's changed. Nothing's going to change. When you tell them the truth, that's all you have. When you're lying, you gotta cover this up. Remember what you said about this. Remember what you said about that. I don't have to do that because I don't know how she got an account. I can have my own beliefs on who I believe did it. That's all I can say. I didn't do it. Have you shared the police with the police? Yes. Can I intervene? One, one second. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Say one that. second, please. We, I want to be clear <laughs> about two things. These young ladies have cooperated with Will County. The attorney on record for Darlene has said that there were 16 hours. If you check the news in the media, 16, I'm sorry, over 16, over 16 hours of, of questioning with Will County. So I call that cooperation. They are here tonight again to clear the air because they want to make sure that whatever they say, hopefully this will pressure the person who they feel has done this to come forward. This is the reason why and Darlene and both Darlene and Tamika have cooperated on the ground with the community activists to work and make sure that this process goes forward. Um, we got 10 more minutes, but in the next 10 minutes, I just want to say two more things. Um, both Tamika and Darlene are willing to cooperate going forward with Will County Sheriff's Department to make sure that this investigation is closed. And that's why they're here. 
Um, Tamika, you didn't get a chance to answer the question Eric had asked earlier, and that is, what do you think happened to Samaje? And if you could stand in front of the mic, though, because you've been locked to the side, just want to make sure we hear you. Well, I can't really say what I think that happened to her because, I don't, like I said, I only went by what they told me. So I, didn't, I wasn't there when the DCFS lady was there. I wasn't there when she took her baby in the house and supposedly changed her pamper. I can't verify the story. We're not, you're asking, then, yeah. I said, I can't verify them, so I don't know. What happened before I got there? But you saw, we didn't, I didn't ask what happened after. I no, just said what I, your I, thoughts I, were based on the reactions of the people there, based on the reaction of mom, mom leaving well, for two I had, hours. I had, like I said, me personally, I had thought for a minute it was um, Lucretia's and Jordan. That's right. That the daughter had played no parts, nothing. Because I said it was only two people that was live kids, which was three. So that's just me personally. I mean, that's just my belief. I mean, like I said from the beginning, I don't got no more. I ain't got have it. I mean, I mean, I let my kids go to the police station. Mm -hmm. I signed papers so my kids can go by themselves. Too. I did too. You know, I ain't had no problem with it because I ain't got nothing to hide. Like I said, I can only tell y'all from the time that I got there. Mm -hmm. So when I got there, I ain't seen her baby. I ain't seen her period. I ain't not one time at all. You know, like I uh, said, I'm, I'm just here to say, I, I don't cover up for you. But it's one thing I don't do. The line, I'm call y'all. I don't care if you're standing right here, I'm going to call y'all today. You know, that's just me personally. Like I said, she really never came out of the house to ask for a baby. That just, at all period. She asked for him when she was sitting in the car. She came, she got out of the car. That's when they was started the car. Doug finally got the car. Done. She opened up the door. She yelled at the car we was in. It said, it's my baby in there. And you saw her in that car for how long before she said those words? And I'm not at, at how long Sheree was in the car that you saw. Sharif was in the car from the time that they first was asking for the keys. To but the I don't know what that is. Is that 45 minutes, an if, hour, if two hours? All together, they had to be like about 30 minutes. Okay. That's, That's not because, true. We'll because she, um, Ja'Kai had called in the midst of that. Her son had called her, but he didn't want to talk to her. He wanted to talk to Krisha's son, Jabari, which was, he was in my car. So Sharif had to come over to my car and open up the door and give Jabari the phone when um when Jabari was talking to Jakai on the phone, Sheree went back and sat on the stoop while the kids was talking. This was before they even got out of my car. So it was before I got there? No, he was there. But she ain't never walked to the car not one time. Yes, yeah, she did. Your your kids was in the car. No. Your kid yes, yes. She never she never she came to my car. She, she never walked to the car while I was there. When I was there, when I was sitting in the car, she never walked in. Okay. Yes, she did. She, when Sheree was sitting in that car, Sheree did not get out that car until I'm telling you when the time that she asked where my baby was at. When she asked where her baby was at, she walked in the house. And when she walked in the house after her and Kreech walked in the house, she came, came back out doing this. That was when Sheree got out the car. Sheree only got, before Sheree, so when she got, came out the house, that was the first time when my baby played in her purse. That's the time Sheree walked in the house. So what's your purse? No, see, in, in the green car, in the green car, there. Okay, like I said, I'm here, the green car here. So that means this door that's on the driver's side door don't even open up. It doesn't open up. So Cherie had Cherie got out the car when uh it was time when Jakai had called and they could pull a record. Um when Jakai had called, he didn't like I said, he didn't want to speak to Cherie, he wanted to speak to Jabari. But in my car it was me, Tamika, CJ, Jabari, and Tamika three kids. And they were standing on the seat then. And after that is when I told them they have to get out the car and go back and play. You know what I'm saying? So Sheree came to the car, gave the little black phone to Jabari, and went and, stood, and, and sat on the stoop. From that point on, they got out the car. After I told them they had to get out of my car, because they was jumping on my seat, me and her stayed in my car and started listening to blues. Um, I thought Lucretia was going to be here as well. She's at work. Thank you. Good, good, good. Come on, any more questions? Last few questions. What, what explanation did you guys get in the days following uh, uh, Samaja's uh, disappearance? You said that you weren't allowed out. No one was allowed in the house from Wednesday, Tuesday. And I have to go back and 
um, that night when um, it was Krisha, Rika, which is Rika's biological sister, they had got those two mixed up and said that Krisha was the new door telling Cherie not to say anything. That was not Lucretia. That was Rika. Um, on that news interview, um, where it was Rika, Krisha, and Cherie, Cherie started to, the reporter asked Cherie what did Shamaje have on. When Cherie started to say what Shamaje had on, Grisha went up to the ear and said, no, that's not what she had on. And people took that as Grisha was telling her what to say. You see Rika in the background, like rolling her eyes and this and that, because somebody did not have that on when she was telling the news reporter, uh, uh, whatever channel she was on, she was telling them one thing, but that wasn't the truth. Grisha is the one that went up and said, no, that ain't what she had on. You know? And after that, I wasn't there, but I'm listening to the whole thing. And if people are just listen to what people saying and stop making assumptions, they can hear everything for themselves. On Wednesday, that morning, Cherie had a lawyer before Tink was found, before anybody knew anything happened to her. Cherie had a lawyer, and the lawyer said, he, he, he tried to get me, he tried to get her, I, I didn't need a lawyer at that time. No one could go in Cherie's house on Wednesday. The police could not go in Cherie's house. You could not even go on the grass. The only people that was allowed in Cherie's house on Wednesday was Cherie, her sister, her cousin. The same cousin Cherie called and asked about a decaying body because her husband <coughs> goes to school. <coughs> her name is Chastity. So were you playing, was your, one of your car bad? Not my car. Whose car was it? The car was, look, it was Chris's car. The car was, the car, we don't know when it died. When I pulled in and she pulled in, the car never was started back up. Until the, was not my car. It was Chris's car. My car was starting. And, but I could not move. Like I said, I'm back then. Krisha's in front of me. Her car don't work. It needed a jump. I could not do anything until they got a jump. When they got the jump, and when we found out that the baby was supposed to be gone, Krisha bagged out. I left. Sure, um, Jamarion, CJ, and other people just started walking around. Just trying to see if they could find her, calling her name and stuff. For me, it was easy for me to drive, ride around. For me, because I'm not gonna walk. I had three strokes. I'm not gonna walk. You know, um, I'm, I'm just not. For me, it was easier for me to drive. So you have you two plus Lucretia and Cherie have been named persons of interest since July. It's been over three months. Have you gotten a sense of what, if anything, you could do to kind of clear your names? And I did. All I could do is, and that's tell the truth. That's the only thing I can do. That's the only thing I know how to do. You know, well, I cooperated. I cooperated. You know, I did everything they asked me to do. I cooperated. Uh, my car was blue lighted uh, with the whatever that stuff is. You know, they even um, put the dogs in my car. You know, it was so many different theories of what I was supposed to have done, this one person putting out to everybody. And for me, it set it, the whole case back. Because everything someone come and lie to the police about, they, they have to investigate that. They gotta find out if that's the truth or not. And when somebody study telling lies about what they think done happened, the police still gotta go see if it's true or not. So every time it, that was going on, it was setting the process back. I feel as though all of this could have been solved months ago if certain things were not allowed. That's my mind. Anybody need something else? I'm sure that this is common knowledge and I 
apologize for not knowing. So are you um, Samaje's father's mother? I am, I am Samaje's father's mother. Okay. So have we asked the last couple of questions, and I think that it's a lot, it's a lot of moving parts. Very, a lot of it is confusing, I'm sure, but have we asked the critical questions? Did we put it up? Because I mean, we have an opportunity to. I know you folks on deadlines. Did you have anything on it? No. You okay? I just, I got a I'm here because my name get brought up into something like that I don't know nothing about. Like I feel like I walked into a nightmare for the day I walked around the corner. You know, I got five kids, two grandbabies. I ain't never had a DCFS before. Don't want my kids and ain't never been and nothing pertaining to hurt my kids at all, period. You know, and I can operate the police. I still don't even have a lawyer. I don't give I don't have a lawyer at all, period. But it's it's funny that they keep saying, oh, all four of them have attorneys. Where is my attorney? What's his name? Can y'all point me in the direction of That's all I'm saying. You know, I cooperate with the police every single day. I, like I said, I signed, the, I signed my kids to go down there by themselves while I was at home. They came back, babysitting my kids, watched my other two little kids, I mean my three little kids, and they took me back down there again. You know, so I'm not understanding how, I ain't, how I'm not cooperating. They cooperate since day one. You know, they, they just don't keep saying it anyway that we're not. But I don't even have a lawyer. So if they, I wish they quit saying in the newspapers or on the news <clears throat> that Tamika have a lawyer because I don't have a lawyer. And I never have one. So I, any question y'all still got to ask me, I can tell you. Uh, anything y'all want to ask me? Who do you think did it? Where do you think? Yeah. Yeah. I don't know who did it. I, don't, I can't even say I think nobody did it. Y'all can ask me who do I think played a part in. I can. I just told you. I said I think that it was Sheree and Christian. I don't know. That's who you asked me who played a part in it. That's just my heart. That's what I feel. I don't know. I don't know who did it. I can never say who did. Darlene, do you think your daughter had something to do with it? No, she was outside just like us two were. We were all outside. One person was in the house with Sheree, and to be honest, <coughs> I can't say. Yes, I assume Cherie do this, or I assume Tamika do this. If me and Tamika never speak to the mic, I cannot lie and say, oh, well, since I met her, I'm going to say she did. No, because she, she was in the car with me, and she was outside, too. So you went over to Cherie's house, so you haven't spoken to her in months. I went over to Cherie's house one this day, the day that's Monday, you went over there. I went over there because that's where they was going. That's where they were. Right. Yeah, so I'm just wondering. So then you were because I feel as though she did this. That's why I don't have anything to say to her. You know what I'm saying? Like, ask your question. Like, you're beating around. Say what you want to say. I'm not beating around. I said, why haven't you seen her since then? Why am I supposed to go? Because I got my own things. I'm trying to, I'm trying to, I got to deal with this every day. So my day was my granddaddy. Her father is my son. I have a daughter that's going through this. Chris going through this. When, when, when Tink left us, it hurted us all. You know, she has a, a, a mama, me, her father. You know, my son got his mom and his sister in this. He still has another son with Sheree. I have to stay strong for myself to keep my sanity. And I have to also stay strong for my kids and my grandkids. Do I want to see Sheree? No. Do I believe Sheree did this? Yes, I do. Can I say I think her do something? No, I can't. But in my heart, I feel as though she did do this. And will I speak to Sheree? No. For what? Why do you think she did it? I think that she did. I believe that Sheree... Is born. I believe that. I believe that she was. She was. Hurt. I believe that she really, really 
was her chin how to deal with it. And I feel as though she did it out of spite. Spite for what? She didn't know how to deal with what? She didn't know how to deal with if if anybody knows um my son and Cherie's relationship, there's nothing on earth that girl wouldn't do for him. Um, as far as anything. Like you can be anybody and a girlfriend, someone he's talking to, she's coming for you. Point blank period. It's only in my in my eyes, there's only one woman for Cherie, and that's Cherie. He has another lady. They had a daughter. She has two girls. Cherie has a little girl. There's only one woman for Cherie, and it's always been that way. You know, I believe that Cherie, when Cherie said, I'll get you, I'll get you more about it, I got you. When she said that, didn't nobody expect that it, it would have been this. Do you believe that Cherie's motivation was to get back at James? Yeah. Last questions. Last questions. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you so much for your time.